What's up, kings and queens? It's your boy, Dan, from Daft Previews, and I'm here once again for the most comprehensive NBA player prop preview you are going to see. I'll be sharing my screen. I'll take you through outlier.bet, talking through all the player matchups, talking about their form lines, what's good and what isn't, and I do all this to give you all the information that you need before you place your bets to win more bets and ultimately put more money in your pocket. Now, I do all this for free. All I ask in return is you to like the video, subscribe to the channel if you haven't. Now, let's go. We're kicking things off with the Chicago Bulls versus the Los Angeles Clippers. Now, some notable game time decisions here, all from LA. James Harden, Paul George, and Kawhi Leonard, all game time decisions, and Westbrook's already out. So, interesting one here. We'll go through all those three players. We'll talk about what their injury is and see what the chances are. So, starting with James Harden, he's got a left shoulder strain. Uh, Paul George, he's suffering from Lee, uh, Lee left knee soreness. And Kawhi Leonard has, what's he got? Fuck, we don't even know what he has. Oh, left groin, my bad. Reading's not my forte. So all three of those guys, game time decision, but let's check out their form lines anyway, just, they do, just in case they do happen to play and it's something that you decide to bet on. So James Harden firstly, his points prop here is at 18 and a half. Difficult matchup here against the Bulls. They allowed the fewest points to point guards on the season. Now, James Harden's covered this in six out of his last 10, yet to verse the Chicago Bulls, though. I wonder what shoulder it is as well um, for James Harden. Is that his shooting shoulder? Because if he does play, an under could be on here. Eight and a half, why not? His assist prop, eight and a half. He's only covered this in two out of his last 10. The Bulls are the 12th fewest assist to point guards on the season. And looking at his rebound prop, He's covered this in three out of his last 10, but he's gone under in six consecutive games. The Bulls allow the third fewest rebounds to point guard. So uh, James Harden, if he does play, I'm thinking we fade the we take the under in plus rebounds, perhaps. I'll take that as a note, something to really look for a little bit later. All right, now we'll look at Kawhi Leonard. His points prop, 25 and a half. He's covered this in four out of his last 10 games. Has a good matchup here against the Bulls. Uh, in head-to-head -head matchups, he's covered in one of his last two. His assist prop lines at four and a half. Matchup's not too bad. He has covered it the last two games against the Bulls. And in his last 10 games, he's covered this in four out of his last 10. Has covered in two straight. Looking at his rebound prop, lines at six and a half. He's covered this in four of his last 10. Excellent matchup here against the Bulls. And he's hit this line in one of their last two games against them. Jumping into podcast P, his points props at 22 and a half. The matchup's not too bad, but he's only covered in three out of his last 10. He's gone under the last game against the Bulls with only 16 points. His assist prop, his line's at three and a half. He's covered this in three out of his last 10 games. He does have a great matchup to get assists, though, but he hasn't been doing quite well in that regard. And looking at his rebound prop, line's at five and a half. He's covered in four out of his last 10, and he did cover this rebound line against the Bulls last, Bulls last time with 10 rebounds. So, uh, so for Paul George... I've been fading him a fair bit. Points and assists is usually the weaker spot. Um, had 23 points and assists last time he played the Bulls. And in his last turn, he's only covered in three of his last 10. But I think if it was, maybe just points. But um, yeah, it could be James Harden too. Jumping into these Bulls players, Kobe White. His line is at 20 and a half. He's covered in four out of his last 10. The matchup's not a difficult one. He has gone under in his last two games against the Los Angeles Clippers. His three-point prop... So my man likes to shoot it from deep. Lines at two and a half. He's covered in four out of his last 10. Difficult matchup here against the Clippers. And he's gone under in two straight. His assist prop. Lines at five and a half. He's covered in three consecutive games. Six out of his last 10. Had had five assists the last time he played the Clippers, but has gone under in two consecutive games. His rebound prop here. Six of his last 10 games. Difficult matchup and has gone under the last two games against the Clippers. So nothing really vibing out of that one for Kobe White, but Io Sonmu, he's been doing quite well. You just got to get the right prop. So he's going to get the minutes, that's for sure. His points prop is 13 and a half. He's covered in seven out of his last 10 games. The matchup is not a bad one. Uh, he has gone under in his last two against the Clippers in these games, 26 and 18 points. Uh, and as you can see, He's playing 38 minutes a night, so I wouldn't even worry about this head-to-head -head form and what he's done against the Clippers in the past. Looking at his three-point prop, 
Lines at one and a half, minus 145. He's hit this in eight of his last 10. The matchup's not a difficult one. The Clippers allow the 12th fewest three-pointers made to the opposition on the season. That's not too bad at all, to be honest. Uh, this could be something for your parlays because the odds aren't great. Minus 145, uh, Desonmu, but he's been hitting it quite well. Looking at his assist prop, he's done quite well on this one too. His lines at four and a half, he's covered in eight out of his last 10. The matchup isn't too difficult. Pretty, the Clippers rank in the middle of the league of assists to shooting guards. So you might even want to combo Desonmu assists and three-pointers, and you should get plus money or even better. So that could be a good play. And looking at his rebound prop, lines at three and a half. This is somewhat inconsistent, so it's not something I'd really consider. But yeah, his three-pointers made times assists. That could be a play. I'll check that out a little bit later. Looking at DeMar DeRozan, been cashing quite well on DeMar DeRozan as of late. Uh, as you can see, been playing quite well lately. So his points prop, 24 and a half, starting to creep up, covering in six out of his last 10 games. Against the Clippers, though, he has struggled. He's gone under in two consecutive games. Um, his assist prop, that's been going quite well, four and a half. So he's covered four assists in 10 straight games. He's covered four and a half in seven out of his last 10. And against the Clippers, he's covered in two consecutive games. So... Four and a half at plus money for DeMar DeRozan. Got my interest there. DeMar assists. Have a look into that one, that's for sure. Rebound-wise, four and a half. Covered in four out of his last ten. And against the Clippers, he's hidden one of his last two. So I think his points props a little bit too high. I know he's been playing quite well recently. But a little bit too high if you're asking me. But his assist prop, that's something I can really get around. Nikola Vucevic. His points prop is 18 and a half. Tough matchup here against the Clippers. He's covered in seven out of his last 10 games, but he's also covered in his last two games against the Clippers, scoring 20 plus points. Looking at his assist prop, two and a half, four out of his last 10. He's covered that in both games against the Clippers. And his rebound prop is 11 and a half. He's covered in five of his last 10, and he's covered this in one of his last two against the Clippers. So I think points and rebounds are probably the best plays here for Nikola Vucevic. If you're going on form and form against the opponent, if we put it both together, what do we see? So his points plus rebounds is at 30 and a half. He's covered this in seven out of his last 10. And the games where he does cover, he covers it quite well, very easily. And in head-to-head -head matchups, he's covered this in one of his last two. Sorry, I was meant to say points plus assists. Wait, points and rebounds is better recent form. Points plus assists is better form against his opponent, I believe. Let's check that out. Points assist, you're looking at 20 and a, 21 and a half. Seven out of his last 10 games. And he's covered this both times against the Clippers. He covered his points and his assist line. 21 and a half. You can see he's been covering that 21 and a half on points alone in his last 10. So that's something I could get around too. God damn, a lot of value in this game. Or perceived value from yours truly. Points plus assists. Cool, let's jump into the next game. Hopefully find some more bangers like that. Going to be an expensive day if I suck. But let's have a look. It's the Detroit Pistons versus the Dallas Mavericks. Luka Doncic is a game-time decision in this one. So we'll start with Luka. Firstly, let's see what the injury is. So Luka's got a right elbow sprain, and he's right-handed, so that's going to be a pretty uncomfortable one. So knowing that, I wouldn't bet on his points prop, even if he does play. But let's check out the lines. His line's at 34.5. Great matchup here against the Pistons. He's covered in four straight, six out of his last ten. He scored 35 and 53 in his last two games against the Pistons. His three-point prop is three and a half. He's covered that in six of his last 10 and in both games against the Pistons. His assist prop is now 10 and a half. What's he got? Three or four triple doubles in a row now. Um, he's covered this 10 and a half line in seven out of his last 10 games. A decent matchup here against the Pistons. Well, it's not a hard matchup, but he has gone under in his assist last two games against Detroit. Makes sense if he's scoring so many points. And his rebound prop, lines at nine and a half. Somewhat difficult matchup. He's covered this in five straight games, though. Six out of his last 10, but he has gone under two games against the Pistons. So this particular game, Dallas are minus seven, seven-point favorites. I don't know the extent of Luka's injuries, so I think his points prop, if he wasn't injured, the points prop would probably be the safest one to take. But he is injured, and I'm not overly confident in his rebounds plus assists. Kyrie Irving. Now, speaking of Kyrie Irving, I just did a YouTube video and posted it up and we're questioning, is Kyrie Irving the best ball handler of all time? So please check that video out. 
new to a concept of video that I'm testing out. If you guys like it, please let me know. But talking about Kyrie, his points lines at 26 and a half. He's covered in six out of his last 10 games, yet to verse the Pistons since joining Dallas. Uh, he does have a difficult matchup here, believe it or not. The Pistons are now the 10th fewest points of shooting guards on the season. Curry's three-point market, you're looking at lines of three. Difficult matchup. He's gone over three in four out of his last 10. He's gone over two and a half in seven of his last 10. His assist prop, four and a half. Pistons allow the fewest assists to shooting guards on the season. Now, Kyrie Irving has only hit this in one of his last 10 games. That's pretty wild. Wouldn't expect to see that. And his rebound prop, lines at four and a half. He's covered this in seven out of his last 10. So difficult matchup here on rebounds for the Pistons. So yeah, no bets on Kyrie for me today, but I do wish him the best. I always do. PJ Washington, he's been getting some open shots. He's covered this line in four out of his last 10 games now. Good matchup against Detroit, yet to verse them. Uh, but four out of his last 10, he's made it happen. Uh, he's taking a lot. He's taken more than 10 shots in his last five, that's for sure. So averaging close to 12 per game. 12 shots. He needs 12 and a half points. Um, and what we can see here is, yeah, in most games, he'll outscore the number of shots that he takes for sure. Shot terribly against Miami, but I think that line's just about right, so I'm not willing to take it. You might want to look at his rebound line at five and a half. He's covered in seven out of his last 10. And his three-point prop, he's at one and a half, but it's minus 166, covering in four out of his last 10. So he will get some open looks. I'm not sure whether he's good enough to make them, though. So having a look at Daniel Gafford. So Derek Lively's out, so Gafford's getting a lot more minutes. Oh, thank you, outlier. Lively suffered a calf issue late in the fourth quarter of Thursday's win over the Heat. Terrific. So Daniel Gafford, his points prop is at 10 and a half. He's covered this in four out of his last 10. Does have a good matchup here against the Detroit Pistons. But what we can do, using our good friends at Outlier, we could take Derek Lively out of the equation and check out Gafford's... Check this shit out. All right. So in his last 10 games, Daniel Gafford, without Derek Lively, he's covered this line in eight of those games, eight out of his last 10. In those games, he's playing 27 minutes. He's shooting 70% from the field. Well, that's a lot of dunks, of course. So... Daniel Gafford up against Jalen Duran. So I do like this. Just letting you know what I'm going to do to research it, though. I'd go on the Stats Muse and I'd check out Daniel Gafford versus Jalen Duran. And then you can see how he's played against him. But we know that Daniel Gafford has played very well without uh, Derek Lively. And you know what makes this even better? The two games he's gone under, the Clippers. We just previewed centers against Clippers in the last game. That's a difficult matchup. The Minnesota Timberwolves, the second most difficult matchup with Rudy Gobert there. So those two games where Gafford went under without Derek Lively, both against very difficult opposition. So I don't mind that at all, Daniel Gafford. Let's check his rebound prop out. Lines at seven and a half. He's covered this in only three of his last 10. But let's remove our friend Derek Lively. And we can see Daniel Gafford's covered this in eight of his last 10 games. The Minnesota game, obviously difficult matchup. And he fell... Half a rebound short against the Phoenix Suns. And that's a difficult matchup too with Yusuf Nurkic. So what you might want to play if you don't like if you're not sure about the points or rebounds, you might want to play both. You're looking at 17 and a half. And if we go games without Derek Lively, you can see that he's covered in eight of his last 10 games. So I think the points prop probably the probably the best one. But once again, I think the best thing to do is to double check. How has he performed against Jalen Duran in the past? And then make your decision that way. So check my pin comment if you're only following me. But let's have a look at these Detroit Pistons. All right, we're taking a look at Cade Cunningham in this one. He's got a difficult matchup here against the Pistons. But Cade's played well lately, covering in six out of his last 10 games. His three-point market, one and a half is the line. He's covered in seven out of his last 10. Well, seven out of his last eight, really. The Mavs do allow the fifth fewest three-pointers made to point guards on the season, though. So they tend to give it up near the rim. But, look, difficult matchup, but I think it's still might worth looking at. Minus 135. That's one of those low-odd type of things where I'd put it in a parlay. I wouldn't play it as a single, but, yeah, Cade Cunningham, three-pointers, might be able to play with that. His assist prop is at 7.5. It's minus 145, covering in six out of his last 10. The matchup isn't good or bad. His rebound prop is at 4.5. He's covered in six out of his last 10. Has a good matchup here against the Dallas Mavericks, but... 
I don't know, Cade and rebounds, it hasn't ended well for me in the past. All right. Where's my man, Jaden Ivey? So Jaden Ivey has a great match here against Dallas. His points line's at 18.5. He just scored 34 points against the Brooklyn Nets. Prior to that, shocking. It's only covered in one of his last 10. His line is a little bit elevated. It's normally sitting at about 16.5, but he does have a good matchup here. Head-to-head matchups, he's gone under in his last two against Dallas. Looking at his three-point market, line's at 1.5. He made six three-pointers against the Brooklyn Nets and has struggled prior to that. Three-point attempts, well, he takes a lot of threes. He just doesn't shoot them very well. 22% from the field. So he's at minus 160. So you're getting better odds for Cade to make two three-pointers than Jaden Ivey. That's pretty crazy. That's the power of matchups, ladies and gents. If you're looking at his assist prop, the line's at three and a half. He's covered in five of his last 10. Has a good matchup and covered in one of his last two against Dallas. His rebound line's at two and a half. He's only covered in two of his last 10. One of his last two against the Mavs. So... Yeah, I'm not really feeling Jane and Ivy for this one. Remember, before I place my bets, I'm pretty much making the decision by gut feel. If my gut's not saying go for it, we're not doing it. So it's all vibe, baby. I saw Thompson. So the Thompson twins, I like their energy. I like their energy. His points prop, 12 and a half. He's covered in last 10. The matchup is on the somewhat difficult side. Uh, in his assist prop, the line's two and a half plus money, covering in five out of his last 10 games. Does have a good matchup to get some assists, but you'd have to check to see how many potential assists is this guy getting. If he's only getting four or five, I would not take this. But if you see potential assists for Asad Thompson sitting at around six, I think the over two and a half is well worth taking. His rebound prop lines at six and a half, covering in five out of his last 10. Does have a good matchup, but um, yeah, I think that line is just about right. So I would, wouldn't be willing to play that. Isaiah Stewart, let's check him out. He's got a great matchup here against Dallas. His line's at 11.5. So normally this is 9.5 or 10.5. But given the good matchup, we see it lift. Now, he's only covered this line in four of his last 10 games. He's gone under his last two games against Dallas. He does make a three-pointer every now and then. Four out of his last 10, he's covered the 1.5. Yet to cover this against the Dallas Mavericks. But look at his rebound prop. That's at 6.5. He's covered in six out of his last 10. Does have a good matchup. One of two against Dallas. So, Stu, I'm not feeling that one. Jalen Duran. Now, his points prop here is at 13 and a half. He's covered in five out of his last 10 games. I'm actually quite surprised he only scored 12 points against Brooklyn because he was bullying Nick Clax in that whole first quarter. Then it looks like he never got a touch. In head-to-head matchups, he's gone under in two straight games against Dallas. Looking at his rebound prop, lines at 10 and a half. He's covered in four out of his last 10. And he's gone under his last two games against the Mavs. So not feeling that one too much either. So from this game, I'd probably say Daniel Gafford probably got me most excited. But Cade Cunningham, three-pointers. That could make an appearance in one of my parlays. Jumping into the Brooklyn Nets versus the Charlotte Hornets now. And this game, Cam Thomas, I believe he's coming back. He's a game-time decision. So is Dayron Sharp. Trey Mann's a game-time decision as well. So we'll start with these Brooklyn Nets. Florian Finney-Smith, let's just look at his points prop because I see a lot of people bet this guy sometimes. And yeah, look, I'm starting to see why. He does get some points. So he's covered in six out of his last 10, but in four consecutive games. Against the Hornets, he's covered in his last two. So that's quite interesting. The matchup's not a bad one. Let's have a look to see how many his shot profile. So he takes a lot of three-pointers. Shoots him at 38%, 49% from the field. Cam Thomas is back in, but Ben Simmons won't be coming back. Cam Johnson is also still out. So Dorian Finney-Smith should still get some uh, a good whack of minutes. So his last four games, they've been hit with injuries, so he's been playing a lot more minutes. Um, no Ben Simmons, no Cam Johnson. I still think he'll probably play between 30 to 35 minutes here. So if we want to fuck around with Dorian Finney-Smith and we say games where he's played more than 30 minutes... You check that out. He's hidden seven out of his last 10 games. He has hidden six consecutive games now. So Charlotte Hornets, they do play at a slower pace, though. But I'm not hating this. Let's call him DFS. I don't mind this with DFS. Uh, but what about his three-point prop? What's that do? He's only hitting his last three, really. Line's at one and a half. So Dorian Finney-Smith. Let me write that down. I'll look, research that a little bit further. All right. Let's have a look at Nick Claxton. Nick Claxton. All right. So his points prop is at 11 and a half. He's got a good matchup here against the Charlotte Hornets. Claxton's covered this in four consecutive games now. It's pretty good. And against the Hornets, he's covered in out of his last five. 
I was only played them once this season, and he scored 20 points in that game. So Nick Claxton at 11 and a half. His line's actually gone down despite the easier matchup here. So Dayron Sharp, he's a backup center anyway. I don't believe he's going to take minutes away from Claxton. Um, but we'll see. He's clearly seen an uplift in his minutes over his last four. Out of curiosity, I want to see what his minutes look like with Dayron. So, yeah. Still playing close to 30 minutes with Daron available. So, yeah, Nick Claxton. Look, I don't have a good feeling about this, but it does look pretty good and it makes sense to me, especially given the matchup here against Charlotte. So I'm not going to bet it purely because my gut's saying not to, but it, logically it looks like a great pick. He does have a good matchup for rebounds too. These lines at 10 and a half. He's only hit this in one out of his last 10. Last two games against Charlotte, Charlotte Hornets, 12 and 14 rebounds. All right. Anybody else? Dennis Schroeder. I just want my. I bet on Dennis Schroeder the last game, and he absolutely killed it against the Detroit Pistons. So let's see if we do find something to get cooking today. So he's covered this points prop in four out of his last ten. The matchup is somewhat difficult here against the Charlotte Hornets. His assist prop six and a half. He's covered this now in five consecutive games. I did take the under and Tyus Jones against this very same team, the Charlotte Hornets, purely on pace. But I thought somebody else would do the creating. So. I don't mind Dennis Schroeder assists, but as we go through all the other players, if there's no one on the Brooklyn Nets where I think their assist prop looks terrible, Dennis Schroeder most likely take the over on that one. So uh, three-point prop, lines at one and a half. He's covered this quite well. He's covered in six out of his last seven games. Pretty good matchup here. The Hornets allow 3.3 three-pointers made to point guards on the season. Schroeder's averaging four and a half attempts per game. So... It just comes down to, uh, it's minus 150, though. I don't even know if I could put that in a parlay. But that's Schroeder. Mikael Bridges. What do we have? Points prop, 18 and a half. He's covered in two out of his last 10. In terms of matchup, he'll be up against Brandon Miller today. So he does have a good matchup. But in head-to-head -head matches, he's absolutely killed the Hornets. So three consecutive games, he's covered it. So this won't be one of the games where I suggest to take his under. Three-point prop is at two and a half. He's covered in four out of his last 10, but he's gone under in every game against the Hornets. So again, that mid-range game on. And looking at his assist prop, see the line's at three and a half. Does have a great matchup here. Six out of his last 10, covered in his last two games against them. He's a little bit juiced, minus 140. His rebound prop, five and a half, only three of his last 10. But look at that. He's rebound extremely well against the Charlotte Hornets. So look, that guy's unpredictable as hell. I don't think I'll ever bet on him again, but here to share you guys all the numbers. Vasily Michik. So I've been waiting to see lines on this guy because he always seems to get it. Not always, but when you check the box score when the Hornets are playing, like, who the hell is this guy? And he's just managed to clean up points or assists. So he's getting active, doing something here. Playing the two position in this game, but points-wise, 13 and a half. He's covered that in two out of his last four games. And I say two out of his last four because those last four games is where he's seen a bump up in his minutes. But keeping in mind, Trey Mann is coming back in. I still think he'll get a large, lot of game time in this one. So two out of his last four. Last four games are really, really going to be focusing on. Assist-wise, he's covered in five out of his last 10, two out of his last four. So I think the lines are actually pretty sharp for this guy. We're not going to catch the books by surprise by betting on him. Who else is there? Brandon Miller. So Brandon Miller's points prop is at 19 and a half, has a good matchup here against the Nets. He's covered this in four out of his last 10. This game is being played in Charlotte. And let me just show you his home games and you'll see that he does play a lot better at home. I'm not taking the prop. I'm just letting you know a lot better at home compared to when he's on the road. And in head-to-head -head matchups, he scored 22 points against the Brooklyn Nets last time. His three-point props at two and a half plus money covering in four of his last 10. Had two three-pointers made against the Nets last time. Rebound-wise, five and a half, four of his last 10. Does have a good matchup here. Had nine rebounds in that game against the Brooklyn Nets. So that's not too bad, but five and a half, pretty big number for Brandon Miller. I don't feel comfortable taking that. Uh, got odds for Grant Williams. We don't normally see lines for Grant Williams too close to the game. So he's covered in five out of his last 10. His three-point prop, he does make some threes sometimes. Lines at one and a half. He's only covered in two of his last 10. So, well, that was a, uh, a little bit disappointing. Grant, Miles Bridges, let's check this boy out. Pretty sure he had a big game today. 
32 points against Washington. So his line in this one is 21 and a half. He's got a very difficult matchup. He's covered in three of his last 10. He has, however, scored 23 points in the last game against the Brooklyn Nets. And his rebound prop at nine and a half, it's plus money. Six out of his last 10. The matchup's not good or bad against Brooklyn, but he only had five rebounds the last time they played. Then lastly, Nick Richards, he's got a difficult matchup, so I wouldn't bet on this, but here to share with you other numbers. Five out of his last 10, he's gone under in five straight games against the Brooklyn Nets, and his rebound prop, four out of his last 10 he's covered, and he's gone under in every game against the Nets. Keeping in mind, those games against the Nets, limited action, so I wouldn't worry too much about that. He's playing close to 30 minutes these days. So, yeah, from this particular game, I think... Dennis Schroeder's probably got my interest and no one else. Let's get into the next one. So looking at the Boston Celtics versus the Phoenix Suns. So this is sure to be a good game provided everyone plays. I say that because Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum are game time decisions. Devin Booker also a game time decision in this one. So he could make a reappearance. We'll start with these Boston Celtics. Drew Holiday. He's got a good matchup here against Phoenix. Neither of these teams can defend point guards quite well. So he's covered this in six out of his last 10 games, yet to verse Phoenix in a Boston Celtics uniform, but the matchup is good. His three-point props at one and a half, minus 130. He's covered in seven of his last 10, and he's got a great matchup here against the Phoenix Suns. Looking at his attempts, he's averaging four attempts per game. So he's shooting them at 58%. So it's a pretty high clip. Yeah, it's not the worst play in the world. And then if, you know, Jalen Brown or Jason Tatum aren't playing, you might see increase in his production. So Drew Holiday, three-pointers made. I'll have a look at that. And let's look at his assist prop. The line for his assist is four and a half. He's covered this in two out of his last five games. The matchup isn't the best, but it's not the worst either. So seven out of his last 10, he's covered his assist prop. His rebound prop, four and a half. He's covered in three out of his last 10. So that doesn't interest me. But Drew Holiday, three-pointers. I might be able to get around that. All right. We're taking a look at Kristaps Porzingis in this one. Does have a difficult matchup to score points against the Phoenix Suns, but he has covered in seven out of his last 10 games. Looking at his three-point prop, his line's at two and a half. He's covered in five out of his last 10, but a difficult matchup here as well. Looking at his assists, the line's at one and a half, five out of his last 10, but ain't nobody betting on Kristaps' assists. His rebound prop, seven and a half, covering in five out of his last 10. I think the one thing you need to wait for is the lineups in this game, especially with such important players missing. So Chris Tops without Jalen Brown is six from 10. Without Jason Tatum, what do we see here? Five out of his last 10. I wonder if we can find games where they're both unavailable. Six out of his last 10. So 22 and a half. That's a pretty high line for Chris Tops. It's normally sitting around 17 and a half to 18 and a half. That tells me... One of these players is not going to play. Uh, but, yeah, I wouldn't make any of those decisions right now. Uh, Jalen Brown, let's check him out. First, let's see what's wrong with him. He's got a sore pelvis. And Jason Tatum has a right ankle issue. Devin Booker looking to return from a right ankle sprain. So Jalen Brown's covered this line in five of his last six games. Pretty impressive. Got a tough matchup against the Phoenix Suns, though. He's gone over in his last two games against Phoenix. His three-point market lines at two and a half plus money, five out of his last 10, one of his last two against Phoenix, but he's got a tough matchup. His prop is at three and a half, five out of his last 10, one of his last two against the Suns, tough matchup. And then his rebound, five and a half, six out of his last 10, and he's rebounded well last two games against the Phoenix Suns. Jason Tatum, 26 and a half points is his line, four out of his last 10. Got a good matchup here against Phoenix. But he has struggled. Last two games against them, he's gone under. All right, if you're looking at Jason Tatum, three-point props. His line here is at three and a half. He's covered in five of his last ten. The matchup is not hard, not easy. Gone under last two games against Phoenix. His assist prop, he's been covering this quite well. He's at five and a half. Five out of his last ten. Tough matchup, though, and he's gone under in two games against the Suns. His rebound prop, seven and a half. Five out of his last ten. Went under his last two games against the Suns. So... Jason Tatum has struggled against the Suns for all props. So if we just check out his PRA, PRA is at 39.5. He's covered in five out of his last 10. His only good matchup is around points, but he's gone under all props against the Phoenix Suns. 
Jumping into these Phoenix Suns, uh, I'll start with Bradley Beal. So I had a lot of success on my last pick on Bradley Beal. Took his overs and assists, and that cashed very easily. Uh, in this particular game, we can see he's covered in five out of his last ten games. Uh, he's got, the point guards have good matchups to score against Boston. Shooting guards do not. So really got to wait to see if David Mook is playing before you take any Bradley Beal points props. Uh, five out of his last ten. Assist-wise, his line's at four and a half. His line indicates that um, well, he's got a difficult matchup for twos, okay matchup for ones. Uh, line at four and a half. When I last took it, it was five and a half, and that was no Devin Booker. So four and a half tells us that Booker might be playing. Uh, seven out of his last 10 games, he's covered this point uh, assist line, though. And if you look at his rebound prop, line's at three and a half. He's covered in five out of his last 10. So, yeah, I'm not feeling any of these Phoenix Suns ones just now, but... I want to show you Grayson Allen, his points and three-pointer props because his last two games have been electric. Five out of his last 10, 28-26 in his last two. Uh, against Boston, yet to play them. Three-point market, two and a half. He's had eight three-pointers made in his last two games. And I don't think the Boston Celtics are going to allow him to do that in this game. Kevin Durant, though, points prop, 27 and a half. He's been playing quite well as of late. Does have a difficult matchup here against the Celtics. His three-point prop is at two and a half. It's plus money. He's hit that in one out of his last 10 games. Looking at his assist prop, that line's at four and a half. He's covered that in five out of his last 10 games. And his rebound prop is at six and a half. He's covered that in five out of his last 10 games as well. So, yeah, I'm not really feeling any KD props. Use of Nurkic, let's check him out. So, the matchup's not hard or easy, but he's very inconsistent. Three out of his last 10 games, he's covered this 10 and a half point line. Rebound prop is at 11 and a half. Has been rebounding quite well as of late. Six of his last 10. Difficult matchup here against the Boston Celtics. Paul Zingas going to stretch the floor. Yusuf Nurkic should be taken away from the rim. So I'd be a little bit unsure on taking that. His assist line's at three and a half, and he's covered this quite well. But I believe he covers this very well without Devin Booker. So let's just check the difference. Seven out of his last 10 games, he's covered his assist prop without Devin Booker. With Devin Booker. Covered in six out of his last 10. So he's a pretty good passer regardless. But yeah, I'm not willing to take that play. So looking at this game, the only one I'm most likely interested in is probably Drew Holiday. Um, maybe the under in Chris Stops, But if you take that too early and Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum are both out, that definitely puts that at risk. So great game to watch. Probably not the best game to bet on. All right, we're jumping into the San Antonio Spurs versus the Golden State Warriors. Steph Curry is out after spraining his ankle. Wemby's still out. Uh, Trey Jackson Davis, game time decision for the Warriors. So interesting to, to see what we can find in this game. We'll start with the Spurs. Trey Jones, I think the main prop to look through here is just his assist prop. Somewhat inconsistent, but looking at his points, he's covered in four of his last 10. Looking at his points because he does have an excellent matchup here, and he has covered in two out of his last three against the Warriors. But his assist prop is what interests me most of the time. He does have a good matchup. He's covered in five out of his last 10, but he's gone under in three consecutive games against the Warriors. Devin Vassell was excellent in the last game without Wemby in the lineup. So he's covered this now in five out of his last 10 games. The matchup isn't good or bad. Scored 24 points against the Warriors last time they played. Interested to see his points lines without Wemby. So with no Wemby, he's only covered in two out of his last 10. So pretty stark difference. Assist-wise, his line is five and a half. It's plus money. Difficult matchup against the Warriors. Covered in six out of his last 10, and he's gone under in two straight games against the Warriors. Rebound-wise, his line's at five and a half. Four out of his last 10, he's gone under in two straight games against the Warriors. Jeremy Sohan. Let's check out all of his props to see what we can find. Points-wise, five out of his last 10, under in three straight games against the Warriors. Assist-wise, four out of his last 10. Had four assists the last time against the Warriors. And his rebound prop, seven and a half. He's hit in four straight, six out of his last 10. Has a good matchup. Has covered in one of his last three against the Warriors. So checking out Sohan's numbers without Victor. And he's covered in five out of his last 10. So not the most compelling ones there. Uh, let's check Zach Collins. Zach Collins will be starting at center in this game. So we have to check him out without Wemby. So Zach Collins, his line's at 15 and a half. It's quite high. But he has covered in seven out of his last 10 games without Victor in the lineup. Spurs are on the road in this one. Uh, Zach Collins scored two points the last time he versus Spurs. Uh, 
the Warriors, sorry, last time you versed the Warriors. His rebound prop, seven and a half. Matchup isn't that difficult for him. Without Wemby, he's only covered in three out of his last ten. Zach Collins is sneaky sometimes getting some assists. His line's at three and a half, minus 160. Great matchup here, but he's only hitting four of his last ten. But if we check him out without Wemby, Zach Collins has hit six out of his last ten. So I think that line's just about right, but I think the odds not that great. So the under three and a half, yeah, I don't like that one either. Three pointers, he does make them from time to time. Check that out. But it's minus 230, so and you wouldn't take him to get more than one and a half. Let's have a look at these Golden State Warriors. We've only got lines for Draymond, Podziemski, and Jonathan Kaminga at the moment. So let's check this out. Pods had him for four assists last time, and he just cashed. Does have a good matchup here, but he's only covered his points line in three out of his last 10 games. Didn't score against the Spurs the last time they played. His assist line was at three and a half in the last game. Now that's four and a half plus money. He's hit that in three of his last 10. Does have a good matchup here. Steph Curry's played a lot of games. We'll see. If... So Pods has only played three games with Steph Curry out of the lineup. And in those games, he covered in one of the three. Rebound-wise, line's at six and a half. He's covered in three out of his last 10. Does have a good matchup, though, but, yeah, I'm not feeling it. Jonathan Kaminga, his points prop has... It's gone up about three points, so 21 and a half now. No Steph Curry, obviously, so it makes sense. Uh, difficult matchup. Spurs are now the 10th fewest points to power forwards on the season. So Steph Curry's only missed three games, but let's check him out without Steph. Kaminga's only covered this line once in his line games without Steph Curry. Um, last game against the Spurs, scored 12, 17, and 15 in his last three. So... Yeah, 21 and a half is not high enough for me to take the under, but I wouldn't take his over, that's for sure. Checking out his rebound prop, that's at five and a half. He's covered that in six out of his last 10 games. Difficult matchup here against the Spurs. Draymond Green, now he would have a great matchup here, but there's no Wemby, and Draymond's not the typical center. So uh, let's have a look at this. Lines at nine and a half, he's covered in three out of his last 10 games. I don't know what Draymond does when Steph's not there. He's covered in four of his last 10 games. Without Steph, list wise two out of his last 10. I think he got a triple-double in his last game. But let's check him out without Steph. Five out of his last 10 games, he's covered his assist prop. And his rebound prop is at seven and a half. He's hit in five out of his last 10 games. Does have a good matchup, but he's only covered in one of his last three against the Spurs. So I don't have any strong feelings around that either. So for this particular game, I'm not feeling nothing. Getting to the next one, it's the Utah Jazz versus the Denver Nuggets. Now, Nikola Jokic is a game-time decision. Keontae George, Otto Porter, Walker Kessler, all game-time decisions as well. So a lot of things we need to take into consideration here, but let's start off with these Denver Nuggets. Let's have a look at Jamal Murray first. So when it comes to scoring points, he has a difficult matchup here against Utah. He's covered in five out of his last 10 and only one of his last six against the Utah Jazz. Assist-wise, he would have a great matchup. The Jazz allow the most assist to point cards on the season. Jamal has covered in five out of his last 10, three consecutive games now. But against the Jazz, he's covered in one of his last six. Looking at his three-point prop, that's at two and a half. He's covered in three of his last 10. The matchup isn't great, but it's not bad either. Two out of his last six against the Jazz. And his rebound prop is at three and a half. He's covered in six of his last 10. Has a good matchup. Last three games have been excellent. And he's covered in two of his last six against the Jazz. Aaron Gordon, let's check out AG, has a good matchup against the Jazz. He's covered in seven out of his last 10 games, 14 and a half points. Against Utah, he's covered in four out of his last six. Looking at his assist prop, that's at three and a half. One of his last six against the Jazz and four of his last 10. Rebound-wise, his line's at five and a half, seven out of his last 10 games. And he's only covered in two of his last six against the Jazz. So, yeah. Michael Porter Jr., Points prop, 16 and a half. Good matchup here against Utah. He's covered in six out of his last 10, but only one of his last five against the Jazz. His three-point props at two and a half. He's covered in five out of his last 10, two of his last five against the Jazz. And his rebound prop, that's six out of his last 10 games. Tough matchup, two out of his last five against the Jazz. So a lot of these guys haven't played well against the Jazz in recent history. Maybe Nikola Jokic is doing everything. Let's check him out. Firstly, what type of injuries my man dealing with? Right arm bruise. Surely he plays. 
Uh, lines at 26 and a half. He's covered in five of his last 10. The matchup isn't too difficult against Utah. In head-to-head matchups, he's covered in four out of his last six. He's gone over in his last two. Assist wise his line's at nine and a half plus money. Somewhat difficult matchup against Utah, though. Five out of his last 10 and three of his last six against the Jazz. And his rebound prop is 11 and a half. He's covered in seven out of his last 10 games. Tough matchup here against Utah. And he's gone under in five out of his last six games against the Jazz. So not feeling anybody from Denver. Let's see if we can get something juicy happening for Utah. So Keontae George is a game-time decision. Keontae George, what's my man suffering from? He's got an illness, right? Is it the same illness that made him throw up everywhere? Possibly. So his points prop, 15 and a half. Difficult matchup against Denver. Four out of his last 10, he's covered. And he's gone under in his last two games against the Nuggets. His assist line, four and a half. Seven out of his last 10. Tough matchup. And he's gone under in both games against the Nuggets. Colin Sexton, his points line seems a bit high. 21 and a half. Uh, he has been playing quite well, though. Covered in five out of his last 10. Difficult matchup here against Denver. Scored 22 against them the last time they played. Has gone under in the prior three. His three-point market here is over one and a half. He's covered this in eight of his last 10 games. Difficult matchup against the Denver Nuggets, though. But he has covered in two consecutive games. It's at minus 135. If you have a look at his attempts, he's averaging five three-point attempts per game. That's nice and interesting, but I'm still not feeling that. The last one is John Collins. Come on, Johnny. Give me something good. Walker Kessler's a game-time decision. If he's not there, John Collins is going to get more time. So, points-wise, it's a good matchup for John Collins. Jokic, not the greatest defender. He's covered in five out of his last 10 games. Against the Nuggets, he scored 15 points in two consecutive games. One of those games happened to be this year. Looking at his three-point prop, oh, it's at 0.5. Fair enough. He's hitting seven out of his last 10. In terms of his attempts, he's attempting three and a half, three-point attempts per game. But for him to make one, minus 224. So that doesn't sound too fun. Rebound-wise, here's where he has a difficult matchup. He's covered this in four out of his last 10. Uh, but against the Denver Nuggets, hasn't fared too well in the past. So very much like the last game, there's nothing too much that's arousing me in that one. Hopefully this last one with limited markets can get me over the line. So it's the Toronto Raptors versus the Portland Trailblazers. The Trailblazers have like nine players out and we don't know who's going to play for them. So markets only available on the Raptors. So I've taken Kelly Olynyk under rebounds for two consecutive games now. I wonder if the data is going to tell me to do it again. But let's check out Kelly. So he's got a good matchup here against Portland. His points props at 12 and a half. He's covered in four out of his last 10. Since joining the starting lineup, he's playing at least 26 minutes. So what I want to do is filter his minutes up to 26. So in the last 10 games where he's played more than 26 minutes, he's covered in six out of his last 10. Not overly impressive. Three-point line, 0. 0.5 minus 189. 26 minutes. He's covered that in seven out of his last 10 games. Does have a good matchup. And he's only attempting 2.7 attempts per game. So I would have thought that would be higher. Looking at his rebound prop, he's only covered in one of his last 10. The line's at seven and a half. That's what I've been taking the under on. In games where he plays at least 26 minutes, he's only covered in three of his last 10. So the matchup isn't that difficult. Look, I'd lean to the under, but the matchup isn't difficult enough for me to take that. Assist-wise, I know he can get it done on this, on this end. 26 minutes is a minimum. Four and a half is his line. He's covered in six out of his last 10. So, yeah, I'm not feeling that one for Kelly Olynyk. Let's have a look at IQ, Manuel Quickly. So, he's been playing very well. He had so many assists the other day. Uh, the matchup's not good or bad when it comes to his points. He's covered 20 and a half, five out of his last 10. You want to look at his three-pointers. His line's at two and a half. He's covered in six out of his last 10 games. But that is a looking at his assists. He's got a good matchup here, and he's been racking up these as assists. Check that out. I think Scotty Barnes went down around here, and he's been cleaning up. So seven and a half. He's got a good matchup here. The line in this game is only one and a half for the Raptors, so I don't see a blowout occurring. I think Emmanuel Quickly can really rack up the assists on this. So finally, Emmanuel Quickly. I might even do a ladder on this one. Take the over seven and a half, take the 10 assists, 12 assists, just get real dirty with it, you know? Uh, Rebound-wise, I know he's been doing quite well with that. Check that out. 
five and a half. You can get that for plus money. The matchup isn't overly difficult, I'd say, uh, but he has covered in seven out of his last 10, so I don't mind that as well. Might even look at his rebounds plus assists because I think he goes over his assists, but then at least we'll get better, better odds. Yeah, there we go. 13 and a half minus 110. Let's just do some quick maths. We've got five and a half plus seven and a half is 13 and a half. So it's about right. You're not losing or anything, but his assist line's a little bit juiced. So yeah, if you take quickly rebounds plus assists, I think that's where I'm going to be heading for a single. And then I'll probably ladder up his assists only. Let's go, IQ. Gary Trent Jr., got to have a look at him. Had a great game last one. 30 points against the Phoenix Suns. Has a good matchup here against Portland. So he's covered this line in four of his last 10 games. Against the Blazers, he's covered in two of his last three. These games were last season, though. So Gary Trent Jr. has a good matchup. Look into that one a bit further. I don't mind his points, but let's look at his three-point prop because I know he nailed a lot of those. Lines at two and a half. He made five threes against Phoenix. Ooh. Portland don't allow too many three-pointers, though. So I'd probably avoid that. Okay, let's have a look at RJ Barrett. We'll look at everything. See if we can find something juicy here. So, RJ Barrett. His points prop is 22 and a half. Playing the poor foot, small uh, power forward without Scotty Barnes. He has covered in six out of his last 10 games. I think the line is just about right, to be honest. 22 and a half. It's spot on. Looking at his three-point markets, lines at one and a half. You can get that for plus money. Trailblazers don't allow too many three-pointers, though. Uh, but he has covered this in six out of his last 10. Looking at his attempts, he's averaging 3.6 attempts per game. If you want to look at his assist prop, four and a half plus money, covering in four out of his last 10. And his rebound prop is six and a half. He's only covered that in three out of his last 10 games. So without Scotty, he hasn't really lifted him from the rebound in terms of his rebound. So, yeah, look for this game. Emmanuel quickly rebounds plus assists. Looks like an excellent play, in my opinion. And Gary Trent Jr. overs in points. I want to look at his activity, his minutes, and stuff like that. But those are the ones that I like so far. Obviously, I'll be doing these daily videos all the time, but I'm trying to think of uh, other ways to create some content for you guys. I just put up a, a video today about Kyrie Irving, and I'm hoping to do something similar where I react to some headlines or whatever the media says, and I share my opinion on those. So let me know in the comment section, is that something you'd be interested in seeing? If not, I'd love to hear some other suggestions. What other type of content would you like me to see? Do you want to make it strictly about betting or do you want to make want me to make more content about basketball in general? Because I am passionate about both of those topics. We can do more betting types of videos or we can do more sports-related stuff. So very interested to see what your opinions are. As always, my links are all in the, the section down below, the video description. Seven-day free trial for Outlier for anybody who's interested. Uh, I get notified whenever you guys use it, not use it, but sign up. So it's clear a lot of you guys uh, are taking advantage of it. So please do. If you have any questions on how to use Outlier, please fire away in the comment section as well. For those of you in the US, 125% um, bonus in your first three deposits with BetUS. I've got a link for that in the video description as well. But we're killing it these days, guys. Just running off vibe, doing my research, but... If my gut says no, we say no. Very simple. We're not overcomplicating things. So we'll write it up, see if we can make it three winning days in a row. Let's go. Up to the channel because your boy's getting busy. Coming to your live from the west side of Sydney. We've got the free picks and the juice and the daily. It's all free. You don't even have to pay me.